On this week's show, BMW promises a longer range i3 electric car, Consumer Reports drops the Tesla Model S off its recommended list, and a DeLorean that can do donuts on its own. These stories and more coming up next on 10. Enjoying today's show on YouTube and want to read the stories you're referring to today? Just head to our website at transportevolve.com forward slash TEM where you'll find today's show notes, as well as links to the latest future car news, buying guides, tech primers and car reviews. It's Friday, October 22nd, 2015. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. And if you like this show, thank the good folks who have decided to support us with a monthly donation over at Patreon, because without them, we wouldn't be here today. We're starting the show this week with news of two different recalls affecting various BMW and Volkswagen vehicles, both affecting airbag functionality in the event of a crash. The first, which happened at the end of last week, concerns a recall of some 993 Volkswagen models, including recent model year Jettas Golfs and E-Golfs, to fix a problem with the passenger occupant detection system, which could result in the airbags either failing to deploy properly or not at all in the event of a collision. The second, a much larger recall involving numerous 2014 to 2016 BMW Mini models, as well as just under 1,000 BMW i3 electric cars, was announced to address an issue with a Takata manufactured multi-stage airbag inflator, which tests have determined may not inflate correctly in the event of a collision. You can find out details of both unconnected recalls on our website and both automakers say a full recall will take place in the coming months with parts replaced under warranty free of charge. The honeymoon between Californian automaker Tesla Motors and trusted product testing house Consumer Reports is officially over, with the news this week that the trusted independent organization has removed its coveted recommendation for the luxury electric sedan. The reason? In its 2015 annual auto reliability survey, Consumer Reports noted a higher number of reported issues and problems with the all-electric ride compared with last year's survey, pushing the Model S from the average rating it had last year to below average for this year. With problems ranging from leaking sunroofs to incorrectly fitted latches, a plethora of suspension squeaks and rattle problems, temperamental door handles and touchscreen freezers, there were also a fair number of reported drivetrain failures, with owners who responded to this year's survey. Although the majority of owners report being more than happy with the service they were given from Tesla in response to their problems, and 97% said they'd buy another Tesla in the future. In response to the news, Tesla CEO Elon Musk jumped on Twitter on Wednesday afternoon to defend the company's reputation, saying that a majority of cars listed were early models, many of which are known to have problems. But with such a high customer satisfaction rating, we think most Tesla customers are still going to be more than happy with their car. Don't you? It's small, has four wheels, seats two, and has zero creature comforts, but it's incredibly fun to drive. I am, of course, talking about the Renault Twizy, the tiny two-seat urban runabout which has proven popular with Europeans looking for a cheap alternative to a two-wheeled scooter. So far, the Twizy has stayed outside of the US, but this week we brought you the news that Nissan, which has access to the Twizy as part of its long-standing relationship with Renault, has brought the Twizy to San Francisco to join Scoot's fleet of all-electric two-wheelers. Just like the scooters you can ride about town with Scoot, the Nissan Twizy, or Scoot Quad as it's been named in this instance, has been electrically limited to a top speed of just 25 miles per hour so that it avoids all of those extra crash test requirements needed for more powerful, faster moving vehicles in the US. But since the speed limit around the city of San Francisco is generally 25 or less, renters shouldn't have a problem getting around. Rental starts from 80 bucks for a 12-hour daytime rental or $40 for a nighttime rental. So if you live in the Bay Area, make sure you join up with the service to get a chance to put this fun, if unconventional, vehicle through its paces. It's been discussed on and off for the past few years, but this week we heard from BMW CEO Harold Kruger, who told a German language newspaper, that BMW was preparing an improved longer-range battery pack for the BMW i3, 
due to launch sometime next year. Likely a response to the increased range of the 2016 Nissan Leaf and 200 plus miles promised by next year's Chevrolet Bolt EV, there are no details as yet as to just how much additional range the new battery pack will offer. But like the Nissan's new battery pack for the 2016 Leaf, don't expect a drop in replacement for existing cars. Instead, we'd expect the 2017 BMW i3 to burst through the 100 mile barrier for the first time, offering somewhere between 100 and 120 20 miles of range at little extra cost to today's model. Also worth noting was the promise of a new third BMW i-branded vehicle soon after the new i3 battery pack increase, but sadly Kruger wasn't feeling talkative on details. As always, when we have them, we'll make sure you do too. There's nothing like a bit of red tape to get excited customers feeling a little blue. And we're expecting that's how Tesla Model S owners in Asia and Europe must have felt this week with the news that Tesla's all new version 7.0 operating system, which switches on autopilot drive features in hardware equipped cars, will be delayed for a few more weeks than Tesla had originally hoped in Europe and Asia. The delay announced by the start of the week by Elon Musk on Twitter is believed to be caused by some regulatory loopholes that Tesla needs to jump through before receiving official permission to roll out the new software for its European and Asian customers. Technically called a public beta last week by Musk during a conference call, it's conceivable that regulators have got a little jittery about the prospect of cars driving themselves along busy, crowded streets in beta mode. But Tesla does at least seem confident that it will be able to meet all the required regulatory processes in the near future. In the meantime, if you're a European or Asian Tesla owner, you'll just have to drive the old fashioned way like the rest of us poor schmoes have to on a regular basis. Sorry. Just one week after Aston Martin CEO Andy Palmer dropped some pretty big hints about the future of an all-electric Aston Martin, the British luxury brand has unveiled a working prototype of the same, which it's called the Aston Martin Rapide. That's like the regular Rapide, but with a capital E at the end, in case you hadn't noticed. The vehicle debuted on Wednesday to coincide with the state visit of Chinese President Xi Jinping, has been built in collaboration with Formula One and Formula E specialists Williams Engineering. But as Palmer explained on Wednesday, Chinese investment firm China Equity will work with Aston Martin to explore the possibility of bringing the luxury electric sedan to market. Hence the connection with President Xi's visit. Save for a very short video showing the car drive over the camera, there's little we can tell you about this car. But having watched it frame by frame, and we did, we're putting our money on an all-wheel drive car with independent in-wheel motors, lithium sodium battery pack, and perhaps even wireless charging. Oh, and it looks pretty good too, don't you think? Traditionally, automotive design follows a familiar pattern where the automaker designs the majority of the vehicular systems, then either makes them in-house or subcontracts out to tier one part suppliers to make the parts for them or supply pre-made units that are compatible with the automaker's needs. Well, for its upcoming 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV, however, GM decided to ditch tradition and went with a more collaborative approach, developing much of the long-range EV's primary systems in direct collaboration with South Korean electronics giant LG. Detailed this week by the two firms in a press release, the collaboration means that pretty much all of the onboard power systems, including the motor, will be made by LG Corp subsidiaries, meaning that the long-range electric car can hit the market in double-quick time. We've covered the collaboration in more detail on our website, so head to transportevolve.com to find out more. As you're probably aware, Wednesday this week was Back to the Future Day, the day in which Doc Brown and Marty McFly visited in Back to the Future 2. And while we don't yet have the flying cars or hoverboards, Toyota took advantage of its connection with the Timeless Classic to officially launch its Toyota Mirai fuel cell sedan this week at a special event in LA. To coincide with the launch, Toyota also released a BTTF-themed Powered by Everything video, in which Back to the Future actors Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd learn how to fuel a hydrogen car from trash, appropriately collected, of course, from Hill Valley, California. But perhaps our favourite bit of the proceedings was the unveiling of a gullwing door Toyota Mirai at the official launch of Celebrations in LA, obviously a nod to the now famous DeLorean time machine that played an important part in the trilogy. Sadly, it won't make it into production, nor can it travel in time or fly, but we think gullwings on this particular car make it look way cooler. What do you think? 
And finally, we're staying with a Back to the Future theme for one last story today, but this one I think you're totally going to love. Over the years, we've seen lots of interesting conversions of the lowly DeLorean DMC-12, but this week, Stanford University unveiled what we think is the best yet, a 100% electric, fully autonomous DeLorean called the Multiple Actuator Research Testbed for your or MARTY for short. Designed to help test the limits of autonomous drive software and see if we can teach robots to do the same kind of crazy but physically plausible moves that rally and stunt drivers can do without crashing, MARTY has a few tricks up its sleeve already, including a perfectly executed sideways donut. There is a serious reason behind the research, apparently, namely teaching autonomous cars to pull moves that will keep us safe if shaken up in an accident rather than crashing. But we're happy enough with the donuts for this one, to be completely honest. Well, that's one fine car. I want it. Nine stories ending a little bit over time today, but you can find all the news that's fit to print at our website at transportevolve.com, catch up with us on Twitter at transportevolve, or check out our latest shows as usual on our YouTube channel. And if you liked what you saw today, consider keeping us independent and impartial by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash transportevolve and pledging your support from as little as $1 a month. We really would appreciate it. As always, there's a lot we haven't managed to fit into today's show, including our review of the longer range 2016 Nissan Leaf, Toyota lays out its new environmental plan, a coast to coast cannonball run with autopilot engaged in the Tesla Model S, and why plug in car sales might be rising in the UK, and it's not for the reason that you think. So when we're done, be sure to head to our site to read them all. Thanks for watching. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have a great weekend, and as always, keep evolving.